Good morning from London. Many of you who've been watching my videos would know that I primarily shoot with Fujifilm cameras. However, Fujifilm wasn't my first camera. As a matter of fact, my first ever camera was a Sony. And that's the exact camera that I'll be using for today's photo walk around London. However, it's not a familiar camera to many people because it's not an A6000 or an A7R. And this camera is 20 years old. This, ladies and gents, is a Sony Cybershot 3.2 megapixel. And when I say it's 20 years old, I really do mean that it's 20 years old, as you can see by the date on that screen. This is going to be a very interesting experiment, that's for sure. Now, it does have some great features that I will talk you through as the, videos, as the video goes on. But for now, let's see what we can get with this. Light here is really, really nice. Let's see if I can get something with the buildings. Of course, there's a fucking van out to park here and destroy everything, but never mind. This could be a good scene, so I might just wait a little bit and see. What I like about it is that you've got the theatre here, you've got the light there, and you've got the buildings in the background. So I am hoping someone else comes down here and I can get a good shot. It would have been a really cool shot with this classic, old, I say classic, it's not that classic, but this old BMW here, the E36. But now obviously that van's just ruined it. But here's what it is. Um, I think there's still definitely a good shot here. And I'm going to wait. Now, one cool thing with this camera is it does have an optical zoom built in. Look, I don't quite know the distances, but seems all right. Now, to add to the challenge of using this camera, I only have four memory cards, which you'd think would be enough, but I'm afraid four memory cards of that capacity <laughs> gives you 70 shots. So it's basically like having two rolls of film. And unfortunately, I can't get this camera to talk to my phone although it does talk to my laptop, and my laptop is not with me. Basically, I only have 70 shots for the whole video, for the whole day. So, yeah, it's a bit like a film camera challenge with two rolls-ish. Should be fun. This optical zoom feature is so cool. Literally feels like going back in time. I have no idea how many shots I've spent trying to get that and I hope at least one of them is good because the potential was definitely there. The light is really nice today isn't it? Look at it, it's perfect. This is a good example of just a busy background. The light's amazing and some really nice um, like buildings and stuff over there as well and if the right person walks through as you can see it could look really good however it's just full of these horrible green bikes over there and they just add so much mess to the image that it just kind of ruins it. So although this location does have potential, if these bikes were not there, it will definitely be a bit better. Today's route will start here in Shoreditch in the East End. I'll weave around some of the streets because the light's amazing and then head into the city through Bank and towards the pools and then eventually the west end. The reason I'm doing that is because at this time of the year the light goes kind of east to west but it goes in a way where the north side of the river gets all the best light and if you walk from east to west it kind of just follows you all the way which is really cool so it's definitely the best time to do this type of Shoreditch to west end walk. This is nice light here. Kind of some hats in the mirror. I wonder if there's a reflection in this This could work, maybe. Oh wow. Even though there was some potential in that previous location, I decided to leave it. The simple reason is that just the where it was, I was sticking out like a sore thumb, just standing there with this camera and this camera and just waiting for someone to walk through. And even though technically I'm not doing anything wrong, sometimes I do feel like people are watching and people are uncomfortable. And my view on it is, unless it's like a 
one in a billion shot. There's no point just causing discomfort to other people because they don't know what you're doing. So if it's not worth it, or in nine times out of 10, let's just say that, I'll just leave it. Yeah, the metering on this camera is just all over the place. But again, what do you expect for an old camera like this? On. Yeah. Oh, I really like the scene. The lights are really nice. You've got a little pub sign over there. So if I just need the right person or the right subject to be like right in front here, that could be quite good. Um, let's see. I mean, there is someone coming, but God, that's a horrible, horrible uh, lens flare. It's like a square lens flare. Look at that. <laughs> and there is a bike coming, but the sun's going behind the clouds, so it might be. Whilst we're waiting, though, this camera does have an optical viewfinder, as you could see, right there. Although. It's literally just a window, doesn't do anything else. As you've probably noticed, for many of these shots with direct light, I'm completely blind, so I'm just hoping it works out. Now that we've found a quiet street, let me show you the setup. So, go into the menu, menu, okay. So, I'm shooting in program mode, which means I have a bit more control, not that it gives you much. Uh, but yeah, program mode, I'm, I've set it on zero EV simply because I just don't know how this camera exposes so for now that's okay Center AF there is multi and then you could actually set preset distances, which is quite cool But center is nice and easy white balance is an auto ISO is an auto and picture quality is fine Normal, but no burst mode because the burst mode in here takes about 10 years, but so normal not using flash and a normal picture profile. That's the menu. That's a little simple scene, like so. Very nice. So I like this shot right here, where you have the, <clears throat> the three buildings kind of layering on top of each other. Not sure if anything will materialize, but I think there's some potential there. I like these simple basic shots without any meaning to them or without anything in particular to mention. They're just like buffers in between the slightly better shots, which I don't think I have any today yet. You've probably seen this shot from me before. In this case. These little patches of light are really cool to shoot. Something like this. Of course, on its own, it's just bang average, but if you get the right subject or if something interesting happens. So right now we're in the Barbican, which is in the city of London, and it's a really cool place to shoot. Now, you can get bored here fairly quickly because it's a very similar, but what I tend to do is just drop in now and again and see if I can get anything. Basically, on a sunny day, you have loads of pockets of light as you've just seen and you can walk around and always find something unique even though it looks all very similar and the reason for it is because as the sun changes so the position of the sun changes throughout the day throughout the seasons the shadows and the light and the shapes you get will be very different so if you shoot around here quite a lot i would say just pop through now and again because you might be surprised. I don't have like the best photos from here, but certainly over the years, I've got a handful of keepers from this particular this location. Cool. I like this little spot here. You got the light coming in, nice shapes. And then I don't think that caught it. And then you can use these two bollards as a, just a way to block off the frame. But yeah. 
Mind you, the spot metering is quite cool. It's not the most responsive spot metering. Well, actually, no, it's not bad. Turn it off. Turn it on. Yeah, he's actually quite responsive, the spot metering mode on this camera. Yeah, it's not bad. I wish there was a way to lock it. That'll be even better. But, so this is a cool scene. Or maybe, maybe, I need to, I need to pin. All right, I think we've got a keeper. That'll do. Sweet. It's nice here. So this little area here, there's always really good light. And we are at the London Museum and the light comes through that opening. And especially in the summer, the light here is awesome. There's not as much footfall here, especially in the weekend, so something to bear in mind. But if you get lucky and the right combination of people walk through, you can get some pretty cool stuff. Like, especially here, there's definitely, there's definitely a photo to be had here. I've switched it off. Switch it back on. There are literally, as I was saying, there's definitely a photo to be had here. Someone walks through. Now, is it going to be a good shot? I don't know, probably not, but the idea is there. So this is part of my usual London loop and I'll walk through here and see if anything materializes. But I try not to hang around for too long in any one place. So that was okay. I mean, as you can see, it's dead here. So time to move on. The light on that street's quite nice, actually. There's people crossing on the motorbike. It's really, really cool actually. There's one guy in the middle. That's a cool little detail. Nothing special, but the light in it's really nice. So let's carry on. And we are in Bank, a very, very cool area for photography. However, at the moment, there's just so much going on here. So many roadworks and bollards and just general chaos that it's a very noisy environment, as you can probably see. So even though you can get a few bits here and there, I don't know, it's, uh, it needs some time to clean up in terms of all the building works. What I do like is, I don't get run over, the light that's reflecting there. As you can see, that light looks really cool. Let's see if I can zoom in. This is where the zoom feature is really useful. Oh, I missed that black cab that just went past. That would have been cool, but I'm pretty sure there's another one just behind that van. So as long as there's nothing else that goes behind that van and the cab gives him enough room, I might but get something, but I don't think so. All right, let's try it. There we go. Not sure if I got anything there, but yeah. Really nice view and a really Nice light as well. Alright, let's go. Cool patch of light just here. I wonder if any payoff at the end. Okay, maybe. Yeah, this is nice. It's right up my street, this. Ideally. Oh. Bikes getting in the way. This is really annoying because I want to expose for the highlights, but without just completely blowing everything into black. 
So I'm trying to find there's a balance. But also, because I can't lock it. Okay, let's try. Right, wait for all these people to walk past. I've got two more shots on this memory card. So I think I'll use them up here because there's definitely opportunity for a good shot if I wait long enough. God, I just really wish you could lock it or at least move that point. That's quite cool with the long shadow coming down. And the memory card's full, so time to swap it over again. But I'm actually quite happy with this. There's definitely, uh, definitely potential here for more, but... Right, time to swap the memory card and go. You know what's crazy to think? This camera is 20 years old. It's like 21 years old next year. It's older than some people that are watching these videos. Yet it still works. And it works well. I mean, sure, it's got many limitations as you can tell but like you can still take a picture and it still works and it's just crazy to think that something that was made so long ago and that was like 12 if not younger when i had this last time in my hands it's just so crazy to think and i do kind of get the appeal of old film cameras now the fact that you're using something that's like 30 40 years old and it still delivers that's a pretty cool thing, I think. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but right up there is a little love heart cloud. Yeah, that is a love heart, isn't it? I'll send that to the missus. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. It's called being romantic. And the tide is very high today. Look at that. Any higher and all this will be flooded. It does happen now and again, believe it or not. This is a pretty cool spot, actually, where you can get like the shard in there and then someone walking up the stairs. I think I've got one or two pictures from here over the years, but whether I can get something on this camera is up for debate. The problem is you need at least like one person to go through, but at the same time you don't want too many people to go through. And now I'm walking along the Thames path on the north side of the river, so South Bank is that way, London, I and West End is kind of that way. Tower Bridge is behind me. The light has completely disappeared. It's behind that cloud there and it's just not coming out. And yeah, without a good light, there's not really much here. Otherwise, this would be completely glowing. But I think it'll be out in about half an hour. So I'm going to carry on walking along here. Hopefully, that light comes out. I've got about 15 shots left on the camera. These are the memory cards this camera uses. Little Sony Magic 8 memory stick, 32 gigabytes, no, megabytes, damn, okay, 32 megabytes, I did wonder why if it was 32 gigabytes, that would be 20 photos, yeah, idiot, anyway, a bunch of these is basically what the camera uses, alright, the sun is back out, oh this is nice actually, a little reflection on the bridge, Oh no, there's a boat coming as well. That could have actually worked out better. I don't know if you can see anything. I can't see anything at all. And the viewfinder is basically hopeless. Oh no, the boat's ugly as hell. Look at that. What the hell is that boat? Jesus. Never mind. I've got one good one from here. Now, I'll make a whole separate video about this topic, but basically the idea is that I'm finding that my photography is becoming more difficult because a lot of the shots that you see in this video, they're just very easy shots. You know, they don't require much thought or planning or you just kind of react to what you're seeing. Patch of light, someone walking through, nice colours, complementary colours, that kind of stuff. It's the sort of stuff that you would always go for when you first start out, but then as you become better, you, you're setting yourself more challenges and the photos need to be a bit more complex. Now, for this video, I'm not really applying that because, to be honest, I just want to get a bunch of shots just to give you an idea of what this camera looks like. But in general, 
this is definitely something that I will make a video about because I'm finding that I'm walking away with less shots after each day for that very reason that what I liked a year ago I no longer find as interesting or I'll still probably take it just why not but it's yeah I'll save that thought for another video when I've processed it properly and can articulate in a better way one more quick point uh, I get a lot of questions about what camera do I use what gear do I use if I use an X-H2 people are like oh you sold the X-T5 uh, if I use the X-T5 oh I sold you <laughs> I thought you sold the X-T5 and yeah I don't know why this happens but basically if you I've updated the gear page I've linked it below it's on my website and you could see an updated list of everything that I own and obviously it doesn't come with me Obviously, fuck was that? Obviously, it doesn't come with me everywhere I go. In most cases, I only use like 10% of it most of the time. The other stuff is there just in case. But yeah, have a look and you'll get the idea of everything that I use. Green light. All right, so it's gone dark. I've had some dinner and I exchanged my pants that were too small. Not that you needed to know that, but anyway. I've got about 10, 12 shots left on this little camera, so I've saved them for night time. So I'd love to get run over on Regent Street. And we're now going to go into Soho because I, there's a lot of artificial light and stuff to shoot and see if we can get anything. It's a bit chaotic here, and everyone's staring at me because I'm talking to a camera. Wow, this is a. That was a test shot, let's just say that. How bad is that? Oh wow, I don't know if you can hear it, see that. That's uh, Yeah, that's gonna be eventful, isn't it? <laughs> that wasn't very promising, was it now? I might get some edgy, arty, blurry shots, but we'll see. That's quite nice here, you've got the plant, the misty window. Right, still. I don't know if you could see that, but it's not really much there, is there? <laughs> Never mind. Let's try something a little bit more easy. This little neon sign. Let's see how that comes out. Alright, I mean, yeah, won't win any awards with it. I think low light photography with this camera is a bit of a lost cause, so I'm going to slowly walk towards my tube station so I can get home and start editing all this. If I see something, I see something, but I won't make an active effort to shoot at night with this camera because it's just pointless. If anything else comes up, I'll put it now. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I'm not sure what this video is going to be like. It might be complete trash and you'll click off after 30 seconds, I don't know. But it's a bit of fun and the next photo walk will be with a slightly more modern camera, hopefully. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a good week, have a good day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.